if you recollect under two sector model in the whole economy there were only two sectors one was the household one was the business sector now we are introducing the third sector that is government so now there will be three sectors household firms and government that means household business sector and government so what additional thing will happen because of government's presence now various things let me explain that government itself can get involved into production and sale of some kind of goods and services that will be requiring the government to produce something and supply it then the government can itself become a consumer because it will also have need to buy some things from the market so government will be having production of goods and services government will also simultaneously consume something thereafter government will collect taxes from individuals as well as business units or you can say the government as a third new sector which we are introducing it will collect taxes from the business sector as well as the household sector and the government will make payments to these parties for example government will provide subsidies to the business sector and will provide transfer payments to the household i'm sure you can recollect the meaning of transfer payments from the national income chapter that we have learnt just before this transfer payments are those components of personal income which are just receipts in the hands of the household but they are not part of the national income you know it right for example unemployment compensation given by government to household is basically an example of transfer payments made so government one side will collect tax from both of these sectors and give the relief to both of these sectors by way of subsidy to the business sector and by way of transfer payments to the households now in this three sector model we will now be very clearly defining the existence of various markets so when you talk about markets you know we are going to introduce the product market correct the factor market and we are also going to introduce the financial market so three markets will come into picture in product market there will be production and supply of goods and services and households will be buying these uh, products and services as part of their consumption whatever money saved by the household that money will be invested right so that will come through financial market and through financial market the business entities will be raising funds by issuing debentures bonds and equity shares government itself will issue government bonds and government bonds will be issued as part of the financial market exposure that means government will be issuing government bonds through the financial markets and the public in general who wants to buy government bonds will be investing their money in government bonds again through financial market so basically you consider one simple point as there will be existence of these three markets along with these three sectors and the whole network of this three sector model we need to understand very clearly so let us do one thing let us now draw our attention to understanding this three sector model so please first patiently listen to this whole thing i'll give you sufficient time to note it down so under three sector model first we do one thing we write some important note over here aggregate demand in the three sector model of closed economy that is neglecting foreign trade consist of three components household consumption then desired business investment demand that is i and the government sector's demand for goods and services that is g so now we have a conclusion that since there is no foreign sector gdp and national income are equal as prices are assumed to be fixed all variables are real variables and all changes are in real terms now let me explain something over here which is very very important so in a three sector model 
what did we exactly observe the three sectors which we are talking about will be the household the business and the government so who is not involved the foreign entities are not involved now if you can recollect difference between net domestic product ndp and net national product in national income we have learned that right that was the net fia fia means what foreign income from abroad because there was involvement of foreign country national economy has influence of foreign income in other words there will be indian citizens and entities who are drawing their income from abroad and there will be foreign citizens and foreign companies who are drawing their income from india that is what we call as net fia that net fia will not exist if there is no foreign sector that is the typical difference between the three sector model and four sector model in fact if you understand this three sector model understanding four sector model becomes extremely simple because then you have to just include one more sector that is foreign sector in the moment you include foreign sector what will happen two more components will arise indian citizens and companies earning income from abroad and foreign citizens and companies earning income in india so the net difference between these two will be considered as net foreign income from abroad and that net foreign income from abroad will change the gdp into gnp that is gross domestic product with adjustment of net fia will transform into gross national product gnp and likewise the net domestic product will get transformed to net national product which is actually the national income so it will be just one small extension to this three sector model so the whole crux of the entire chapter's understanding lies with this three sector model so let us now do one thing let us carefully note down the circular flow of income in case of three sector economy or three sector model so here we have business and household as uh, two sectors that were originally existing new sector that came into picture is government now as i told you earlier there will be three types of markets product market factor market and financial market now please understand the flow clearly i'll give you enough time to write from the business sector goods and services will be sent to the product market because if suppose i am producing television then television cannot be bought by household directly from this business sector television will be available in the market as product market so business sector will be supplying televisions in the product market and through the product market those goods and services will be flowing to the household now mind it this is the real flow what i have shown over here and when the household will be making payments for these goods and services it will be the money flow which will be the consumption expenditure and that consumption expenditure will be considered as expenditure on domestic products which is coming as an inflow to the business now business itself will be spending some money in buying products from product market and those are basically investment expenditure correct that is basically investment expenditure government will also make purchases from the product market that we call as government purchases now look at the existence of factor market so the factor supply will basically come from the household so household will provide factor services and those factor services via factor market will be supplied to the business again this line what we are showing over here is the real flow that is the flow of the factor service and the payment made against this will be considered as factor payment which will be expenditure for the business but income for the household now you know one thing what is having personal income to the household is basically the income of household and consumption expenditure made by them is their consumption so obviously 
इनकम माइनस कंजम्पन एक्सपेंडिचर विल रिजल्ट इन टू सेविंग्स करेक्ट इफ दैट रिजल्ट इन टू सेविंग्स सेविंग्स विल बी इन्वेस्टेड बाय हाउस होल्ड वाया द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट सो हाउस होल्ड विल मेक देयर सेविंग्स इन्वेस्टेड एंड दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट विल बी चैनलाइज एज सप्लाई ऑफ कैपिटल टू द बिजनेस सेक्टर देर आफ्टर वॉट विल हैपन गवर्नमेंट विल ऑल्सो इशू बॉन्ड्स through financial markets i told you i explained you this point already so government will also get money via issue of government bonds now one more chain of connection between the business and household where these two get connected with the government is basically existence of taxes taxes will be paid by business entities as well as households to the government and in turn government will spend towards business sector by way of subsidies and government will also spend towards household in the form of transfer payment this is the complete explanation on circular flow in a three sector economy let us move ahead and now we will write up the notes further the government sector adds the following key flows to the model taxes on household and business sector to fund government purchases transfer payments to household sector and subsidy payments to the business sector government purchases goods and services from business sector and factors of production from household sector and government borrowings in financial markets to finance the deficit occurring when taxes fall short of government purchases let me take you ahead and now let us write something about income determination the aggregate demand function is c plus i plus g and the aggregate supply function is c plus s plus t so look at one thing c stands for consumption i stands for investment and s is basically the savings g stands for government expenditure t stands for tax and at equilibrium we know aggregate demand will always be equal to aggregate supply that will be matching with the income which is denoted as y so look at one thing because of this third sector introduction what was the new component introduced tell me this g came as a new component earlier in a two sector model it was c plus i which was considered as aggregate demand and c plus s was considered as aggregate supply here g is added to the demand and t is added to the supply function g stands for the expenditure made by government and t is basically the tax revenue earned by the government so at equilibrium because aggregate demand has to match with the aggregate supply we will say simply c plus i plus g equals to c plus s plus t on both the sides of equation don't you agree that c can be eliminated because that's common and we will find that i plus g equals to s plus t so at equilibrium point i plus g equals to s plus t look at one more thing once again we have learned earlier that in a two sector model at equilibrium i was equal to s correct or not i was equal to s the investment was same as savings but here savings and taxes taken together will be aggregate of i and g that is i plus g so now because of government coming into the picture as a third sector we have the change in the equilibrium as 1 plus g should be equal to s plus t time for us to move ahead and now we will learn about the fact that what if it is not an equilibrium at equilibrium what did we observe at equilibrium we have observed that aggregate of c plus i plus g will be equal to c plus s plus t in case here c plus i plus g is greater than c plus s plus t a situation of a non equilibrium where c plus i plus g is greater than c plus s plus t what will be the impact we say if actual demand is more than equilibrium excess demand makes business to sell more than 
what they currently produce unexpected sales would decrease inventories investment rising production by hiring extra workers which will increase aggregate income and again demand and supply will be equal it means an increase in aggregate spending makes the aggregate demand schedule shift upward as a result the equilibrium point would shift upward causing an increase in the national income let us move ahead and now talk about the other possibility the other possibility will be if c plus i plus g is less than c plus s plus t we would say if actual demand is less than equilibrium we will conclude that supply exceeds demand business firms would be unable to sell the output fully correct increase large inventory investment and tendency for output to fall which will decrease aggregate income and aggregate demand and supply will be equal it means a decrease in aggregate spending makes the aggregate demand schedule shift downwards as a result the equilibrium point would shift downward causing a decrease in the national income please try paying attention to what i am saying over here this is a case where the supply is more than the demand correct if the supply is more than the demand what will the producers find that they are supplying goods in the product market but consumers are not picking the goods from there so supply is more than demand inventory starts building up for example if i have produced and supplied 10000 units but demand was only for 7000 units 3000 units of my product remain unsold so what will happen all the producers in the market they are finding that their inventories remain unsold and what they will do next round of production do you think they will continue to the production of same level or will they curtail the production the obvious answer is they will curtail the production if they curtail the production now they will have lesser requirement of factors of production if lesser requirement of factors of production means what will happen they will try to just give lesser and lesser factor income that means household will have less income if household has less income there will be reduction in the demand of goods and services made by the household eventually the demand and supply will come to equilibrium so inequilibrium may arise but this type of inequilibrium if it arises it will pull down the national income inversely the earlier case that we have seen where demand was greater than supply if demand is greater than supply what will happen the suppliers will be having need for producing more and more and in order to produce more and more what they will do is they will appoint bigger level of factor production and they will be ending up paying more and more income to the factors as a result the increase in the factor income will cause the demand of the product anyway to remain high but the supply will also increase because of more production obtained and eventually because the supply is matching the increased demand the overall national income will increase so the previous scenario that you have written over there the national income increases in this particular scenario the national income reduces so i am sure you have understood both of these possibilities and you have written this whole part of the notes already so time for us to move ahead and we write up now something very very important the government sector and income determination over here i would want you to first write the notes we will have the whole discussion into four components first component is income determination with lump sum tax assuming that the government imposes lump sum tax that is taxes do not depend on income has a balanced budget g equals to t and also that there are no transfer payments the consumption function is defined as in a three sector model c equals to a plus b into yd where yd is basically y minus t y is the income and t is standing for taxes time for me to explain this whole phenomena now in a three sector model you know 
what was the original consumption equation that we have learnt c equals to a plus b into y i have explained you that same equation more than 20 times already in this chapter right c equals to a plus b into y now what was c the total consumption what was a unavoidable consumption or we can call that as autonomous consumption plus b b stands for the marginal propensity to consume and y was the total income so if the household has prepared themselves that they will be spending 60% of their income but now imagine that taxation is coming into picture and assume that tax is 20% so what will happen whatever income is coming in the hands of the household 20% of that they will have to pay tax so the disposable income in their hands will be only 80% correct so yd is the new variable that we are defining over here and yd is nothing but disposable income the disposable personal income will be nothing but the personal income minus the taxes so income minus the taxes will basically become the net income and then net income will have the multiple of b getting multiplied so the equation remains same c equals to a plus b into y but in place of y which was total income now you will take only the disposable income and disposable income actually means income minus the amount of taxes that is what we have understood over here and let us uh, now move ahead and write up this uh, extension to this particular first part that is income determination with lump sum tax so moving ahead we will write y equals to c plus i plus g this is considered as the first equation by substituting the value of c in equation 1 what was the value of c we have just obtained we have obtained value of c as a plus b into y d y d was the disposable income correct now how do you arrive at y d that also i have explained to you it is y minus t correct y minus t becomes y d so when you now expand this whole term b into y will become a separate term and b into minus t will become a separate term and then this whole part a plus b into y minus b into t we will be obtaining as a separate term like this now if you shift b into y to the left hand side you will be getting y minus b into y equals to a minus b into t plus i plus g and further solving it we get this whole equation transformed like this and now if you want to determine the value of y how will you do that this 1 minus b will be shifted to the right hand side and it will be 1 divided by 1 minus b do you know what is 1 divided by 1 minus b don't forget ever at the beginning of this class today we have learned this concept of investment multiplier 1 divided by 1 minus b will become the investment multiplier that factor will be multiplied to this whole thing and that will become y so determination of income in this three sector model under this first segment comes like this y equals to 1 upon 1 minus b that is the investment multiplier multiplied into a minus b into t plus i plus g